everyone. So a lot of you guys have been asking for more tutorials and well, here's one I've been wanting to do for quite some time now, a short tutorial on mic placement on heavy guitar. I touched on this briefly during the Dynamount review and I thought I could go a little more in depth for you guys. So what we're gonna work with here is my standard amp setup, a Rev Generator 120, a Mesa cabinet and a single SM57. I just wanna keep it basic here to demonstrate the principles involved. I hope to get into more complicated mic setups in part five of the series, so watch for that. Now, as I've said before, when it comes to heavy rhythm guitar, uh, mic placement is absolutely everything. Slight variations can have a serious effect in the overall tone. It really does come down to a game of millimeters and the sound is much more in the mic than it is in the hands. Okay, let's kick the basses out of the room and get to work. When miking up a 12 inch speaker, the brightest part is always gonna be dead center. And as you move the mic further to the outer rim of the speaker, uh, the tone will darken and smooth out the top. Generally, the sweet spot on a speaker is where the dust cap meets the cone. And as a rule of thumb, it works pretty well most of the time. Uh, for your own recordings and experimentation, I recommend a notepad and the camera on your smartphone. That way you can visually reference where the mic is placed for each variation you make. Now, what I've got here are six variation of where a mic is placed. Dead center, sweet spot, off axis, mid cone, and because we can also work on the Z axis, a sweet spot with the mic pulled back about two inches and off axis with the mic pulled back as well. It's a single rhythm track reamped with the exact same amp settings, no post EQ. The only variable here is where the mic is placed. Check it out. Those are some pretty massive differences. Of course, the real test is how does that all work in a mix? Take a look at this. Once again, huge differences in tone and clarity, not only in the top, but also in the bottom of the guitars too. Now, because an SM57 is a cardioid mic, it has proximity effect, where the bottom end of the frequency range will be boosted in direct relation on how close the mic is to its source. And that's the sort of factor that can make or break a great guitar sound. When recording heavies, it is all too easy to get a little too much girth going and not leave any room for the bass guitar and not to mention get overwhelmed by the palm mutes. Pulling the mic back a little bit from the cabinet can certainly help out in this situation. It's also worth mentioning that the level of the signal will change depending on where the mic is placed. Now I've compensated here as best as I can, but in your own experiments, it's very important to be aware of the level shifts as what's louder can be mistaken for better. And because our perception is flawed, it's very important to take breaks when you're evaluating a guitar sound. For me, this is always the hardest part. Walking away for a few minutes. Oh, I am always tempted. Oh, just one more ramp, but it's real easy to get your ears fatigued and lose your objectivity. What you think is sounding amazing can wind up sounding like total crap the next morning because you've been listening to the same thing for eight hours straight. Take breaks, you'll save yourself a lot of grief as it is all too easy to chase your tail doing this sort of thing. 
Now, keep in mind, this is just a drop in the bucket when it comes to miking up guitar. This was just six basic variations, but the possibilities are almost limitless. Multiple microphones, multiple speakers on the same cabinet, hell, multiple cabinets, all with variations on mic placement. This all really opens up your palette, and with practice, you can come up with something you can truly call your own. All right, I'll see you guys in the next episode where we take a look at combining different microphone types.